That's the way that they think. And you can give them all kind of information and prove that this is the right way. You know what their answer is going to be? I just don't care what you believe. I don't care if there are 20, 28, or 30 believe. I just don't care. That's your own problem. People begin to listen to you when you care for them. That's the connecting point. That's the connecting point. And the churches that are growing are connecting with the community. And are connecting with their needs. Like Jesus did more than 2,000 years ago. What do you need? I need water. But I'm a bad person. That's why I come at noon. You know what? I think there is water in a place. And if you take from that water, you're never going to need more water. And he began the conversation because she was in need of something different. <coughs> please, please, the connecting point. The Bible said that Jesus did it right and we need to do it the same way. What is the clue? And let's close this morning. What is the clue? The, 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 not the clue, the clue. What is, how, how do we, because it's easy to bring people to the church. How do we keep them here? How do we people stay here? The glue, listen, the glue is relationships. Relationships. Relationships, relationships, and relationships. We relate to people. They become our family. They become our friends. We connect. We don't judge people. We don't criticize. We connect and we help them. Because the Bible said that He who began the work in one person, who is responsible to finish the work in that person? God. Is God done with you? Are you perfect already? Hey, okay. I got many years in the seventh day in the church. I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. I'm going to London now and in a couple of weeks, and I'm preaching over there with, you know, to more than 200 people. Latinos that are over there in, in, in England. And when I look back, and I said, Father, I, I gotta believe in you, I gotta trust in you because I don't know, I don't see much of a difference. In fact, sometimes I see that it's getting worse inside of me. That when I get through something, something new is coming up. Man, I'm gonna have to deal with this now. It's an attitude. It's a new bad habit. I don't know what it is. It's like it never ends. But I gotta trust what the Lord said. I gotta trust that He said that He began something with me when I was 12 years old. Amen. And I gotta trust that He's gonna finish it. Someday, at some point, He's gonna say, done. Amen. And you know what? That done is gonna be a miracle. Amen. That's why He needs to transform us before we can get to heaven and see God face to face. Amen. And that's why when people come to this church, we don't try to see if this person can become a seven-day Adventist 24 hours after he became baptized. You know, the seven-day Adventist culture is so weird. It's different. <coughs> the way that we talk, the song that we sing, the food that we eat. I went to Argentina. Argentina, they're meat eaters, you know, right? Have you ever been in Argentina? No? You've been in Argentina, they eat a lot of meat and pasta. Pasta from Europe, meat from Argentina. So we eat a lot of pasta and we eat a lot of meat. In fact, the best barbecues are down there in Argentina. People go over there and pay for a weekend, four or five days, and they do a trip, they pay money, they go, they do sightseeing, but they go and eat the meat over there. So one day I was out, I said to my wife, when we, when my, my mother, when we became Seventh-day Adventists, somebody, you know, one of those bright Seventh-day Adventists said, well, you know what, the best food that you can eat now is soy bean. That is the purple, that is, of, that is the super food. And my mother, my mother believed it. So she began to eat soy milk every single day doing the meal, doing the patty, doing the hamburger with soy and soy and soy and soy and soy and soy.
suddenly she ended up with the most horrific, horrible uh, 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 body skin reaction to soy. To the point that the doctor said, if you keep eating soy and you keep eating that garbage to your kids, you and your family are all going to die because that is bad. Don't do that anymore. So my mother, she cannot touch one soy bean anymore for the rest of her life. We ate too much soy bean. But I remember when I invite some of my friends to eat, you know, the veggie meat. So switching from an Argentinian steak to a veggie meat, just imagine. Just imagine the look of my friends that were not Adventists. That if you see and you Google Argentinian barbecue and you Google that, you will see that, okay? So, you know, coming from that to that, my friend was like, what is this? <laughs> Veggie meat is weird and it's nasty. And you gotta get used to that nasty thing. So, we gotta give people time to adjust to our culture. That's what I'm trying to say. And the only way that people can adjust is through relationship. 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 We gotta make sure that the people that come to the church will see Jesus through us. Amen. I saw the other day a sign that it says some people or the only Bible that some people will ever read is going to be your own life. Amen. Some people may never read a Bible but they are reading you. Psychologists said, sociologists said that we have about 15-20 people that we impact on a daily basis. More than 15 people are looking, are close looking of what you're doing. Your life impact, whether you know it or not, your life impact 15 people that are looking at you. And they are saying, I want you to believe. I don't want you to believe like him. I want you to be like him. I don't I want you to be like him. No, I don't want you to be like him. No, no, no. That's 15 people. Relationship. When Jesus changed our life, He changed the way that we act, the way that we think, the way that we relate to other people. And when we do these four things, I believe, according to the Bible, Acts 2.47, praising God and enjoying the favor of all of the people, and the Lord added, added, at the end, listen, church growth is a miracle from God. Amen. Who wants to come to church today? No one. When you see a new person in the church, that act is just a miracle from God. Amen. God is bringing that person. Amen. And God is helping that person to connect with you. <coughs> I have never seen Jesus in my life. Have you ever seen Jesus? My grandmother. Never seen Jesus in my life. You know, sometimes, Pastor, we get phone calls, okay? Some people say, Pastor, last night I was dreaming something and I dream about this horse from Revelation and this other stuff. You know, please tell us because... Said, what did you... First of all, what did you eat last night? That's the first question. <laughs> what did you... What was the last meal? Okay? Listen, I have never seen Jesus. I have never seen an angel in my life. I have never seen anything in my life. But I became a seven-day Adventist because I saw Jesus in the life of other people. Amen. 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 And that is a miracle from God. Yes. That we believe in somebody that we haven't seen, we haven't heard. But we believe in somebody that we know changed my life yes. and is still changing life. Amen. Amen. So when you see a person out there, you may see somebody that you can say, no, that person will never gonna come to Jesus. Don't ever look at somebody like that. Because you have no idea what God is really doing in that person. You have no idea the ways that he has to impact the life of somebody. 
And if at some point God is put you in contact with somebody, <coughs> it's because God believes that you can deliver through your life a message to that person. You're still alive <coughs> because God is still working. And it's going to work through you or it's going to work in spite of you. So John, from the Florida Conference, he got one message and one message only. Keep growing this church. Amen. Amen. Don't ever, don't ever dare to say, oh no, in our church we want quality, not quantity. That is the most evil a statement that you can make. That is the most evil statement that you can make. Evil. Because if you have three childs and one of them gets lost and that child gets a broken leg and a broken arm and maybe two broken legs or a broken spine that child will never gonna walk again you will never going to say I don't care about that child I want quality not quantity I'd rather stay with these two that are good and now with this one will you say that? Never. God will never say that don't ever don't ever don't ever in the name of Jesus don't ever be like the devil God is after quantity. He is after human beings. Amen. All of them, if He can. Amen. He is the Savior of the human race. Amen. And whoever starts the work in somebody, He will finish it. He will finish it. So please, in the name of Jesus, don't ever stop thinking about outreach. Amen. It's not about you. It's not about the building. It's not about the piece of land that we have and wanted to be, you know, have a bigger church. It's about somebody else that is looking for the Lord. Amen. So let's stand and let's pray that God is going to give us that burden inside, that fire inside, like this German gringo. And one day he came to Argentina and without knowing the language, without knowing anything, he came on fire. And because of that guy that in 1894 came to Argentina with a suitcase and the message of Jesus, today an Argentinian guy is a seven day Adventist pastor Amen. and he's returning the favor to you. Please, please keep on fire. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning because you allow me to speak to this beautiful church that they are going through different kind and types and shape of inside challenges, situations, issues, difficulties in their life, marriage, financial. But please, Father, no matter what, I'm asking you to give them back the fire for outreach, Amen. for soul winning, for one more person, one more neighbor, one more somebody else to connect with somebody from this church that will come to this place and you will find Jesus right here. Amen. I'm asking for John Gray, our volunteer lay pastor, an amazing person, that he's a hard worker every single day. And beside that, he's on fire for you. Amen. Bless his leaders, the plans, and his passion for outreach. And every single plan that we have in this church, we wanted to put on top of every single plan, outreach as a priority. Amen. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Seventh-day Adventist Church. You have great plans for this place, Amen. for this church. I'm asking you, Father, to deliver a special kind of anointing for each one of the families, for each one of its members, for Pastor Gray, for the plans of expansion, for the ways and the talks and the following meetings that we are going to have about how can we continue to plan and continue to grow this church. Outreach is going to be our priority. No matter what, we are going to begin a heavy, very super intentional mood of praying for one more person to join, to join the church. Amen. Bless us. Be with us. Help us to get through any kind of situation that we may be uh, going through. But Father, don't ever, don't ever get this fire away from our heart of winning one more soul for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.